If you've just purchased a Fireface UCX2, congratulations on investing in one of the world's most powerful compact audio interfaces. Built in Germany with the precision engineering that RME is famous for, the UCX2 delivers pristine sound quality, rock solid stability, and an amazing amount of flexibility for an audio interface of its size. During this video, I'm going to be going through the basics of setting up the hardware and installing the drivers, all the way through to getting started with RME's powerful Total Mix effects. So stick around. By the end of this video, you'll be on your way to professional level results using the Fireface UCX2. On the front panel, you'll find everything you need for hands-on control. There are two high quality XLR combo inputs for microphones or line level sources, plus two additional inputs that can be used for line or instrument use, ideal for guitars or keyboards. Beside these, you'll also find a headphone output. On the right, you'll see a high resolution color display, four quick select buttons, and a single push encoder that together make up the UCX2's onboard control system. You can adjust levels, routing, and monitoring directly from the unit, even without a computer. We'll look at this in more detail later. On the back, we find four more balance line inputs, and next to this, six balance line outputs. To the right of this, we find two 5-pin DIN MIDI ports for MIDI input and output. To the right again, we have both ADAT out and input ports, giving us a potential additional eight inputs and outputs. Below this, we find a word clock port that can be switched in the settings to be used for input or output. This is used to synchronize timing between digital devices, helping us to prevent pops, clicks, and other digital artifacts. Next, we see a USB port for Durek, the direct USB recording feature. This port can also be used to connect the RME ARC USB remote controller. On the top left, we see a port to connect the supplied breakout cable for AES, EBU and SPDIF inputs and outputs. We then see a USB host connection and a locking 12 volt DC power connector. Now that we're familiar with the hardware, let's install the software. Head to the RME website and go to the download section. Select the Fireface UCX2 as your device, then select your operating system, followed by driver. Mac users can pick between two driver systems. The classic kernel extension driver offers the full feature set and supports Intel and older Mac OS systems. The newer driver kit version is for Apple's modern secure framework required on the latest Mac OS releases. Whichever you choose, both provide the same high performance RME experience. After download, I'd highly recommend reading the installation instructions for your Mac version. For Windows users, simply download and install the driver suitable for your version of Windows. In all cases, I'd recommend restarting your computer so the driver can register correctly. So let's get everything hooked up. Starting with the rear panel, connect the power cord to its socket and twist it to lock it in place. Next, connect the USB cable. There's a choice of two USB cables supplied, a USB-A cable and a USB-C cable. Use the one that's most suitable for your computer and try to avoid hubs where possible. For this simple setup, we'll connect studio monitors using line outputs one and two. On the front panel, connect any microphones to XLR ports one or two, and any instruments or line level gear to inputs three or four. Finally, plug your headphones into the front panel output. Now that everything's connected, let's take a look at how we can control this interface with both the hardware controls and total mix effects. The UCX2's main encoder and four buttons give you access to all of the major controls. To get started, just press and hold the main encoder to power the unit on. By default, turning the encoder will adjust your main output volume. If you want to control your headphone volume instead, simply press the encoder once and then turn to adjust. To the left of the display, you'll see four buttons. Each one opens up a different group of functions. The top button gives you control over mic gain for inputs one and two, and if you press it a second time, it switches to line and instrument gain. The second button is for Durek, the direct USB recording feature, and pressing it again takes you to its settings. 
The third button lets you access settings for each input. And if you press it a second time, you can adjust their mix for each output. Finally, the fourth button is where you'll find setup options and a second press takes you to the built-in reverb and echo controls. Once you're inside any of these screens, you can use the main encoder to navigate. Turn it to move around, press it to select, and then turn it again to adjust your settings. It's a really intuitive layout, and once you've used it a few times, you'll find you can fly around these controls without even thinking about it. Total Mix Effects has two routing modes, Submix and Free. For this quick start guide, we're going to stick to Submix mode. You'll notice on the main display there are three rows of faders. The top row represents hardware inputs, so analog inputs such as microphone and line, as well as digital inputs as well. The second row represents software playback and is typically going to be output from your door. And finally, the third row represents hardware outputs and will include things like your main monitor outputs, line outputs, digital outputs and things like headphones as well. Before we go ahead and create our first mix for one of these outputs, let's take a look at setting up the analog inputs. I'd like to record a vocal and acoustic guitar using analog inputs 1 and 2. We can see that currently these two channels are combined into one stereo channel. To disengage this mode, I'm going to click on the tool icon to open up settings for that channel. And then I'll go to the top where it says stereo and click on this button to disengage this mode and create two mono channels. I can further adjust settings for each of these channels by clicking on the tool icon again to open up the settings panel. I can, for example, here do things like turn on phantom power by clicking on the 48 volt phantom power button. Now I don't need it for my particular microphone, so I'll switch it off again. And of course, I want to adjust the gain for this singer's input. So I might ask my performer to start singing and then adjust the gain until I've got a healthy level. You can see from the meter on the left hand side what the current level is. So once I've gone ahead and done my settings for my inputs, I'm ready to start creating my first mix for tracking. Now an important thing to remember is that every single output can have its own individual mix. Therefore, before we start to adjust any faders on rows one and two, we should first select the output that we wish to create the mix for. In my case, I'd like to create a headphone mix, so I'll click on Phones 1. Now that I've done that, I can start creating my mix. Now I'd like to start off by bringing the level up of the singer on Analog Input 1. So I'll ask my performers to perform and I'll bring that fader up. Now you may have noticed that that signal is panned completely to the left and that's because these two channels were previously a stereo channel that we split. So I can fix that by double clicking on the pan control for each of those channels. Now let's bring up the fader for the guitar. You're good I see and I Now when we first set up Total Mix with our door, by default, the Stereo Master Bus will be going to Analog 1 and 2 in the Software Playback section. So that's why I'm now going to bring up this fader to introduce the backing track. And this is the basis for creating any mix in Total Mix Effects. To recap, first of all, make sure you select the output that you wish to create the mix for. And then you can create that mix using a combination of analog and digital inputs and software playback channels. 
Once you're comfortable with these basics, I'd encourage you to explore further, especially features like Durek, direct USB recording. This allows you to record up to 40 channels of audio directly to a USB stick connected to this audio interface, no computer required. I'd also encourage you to take a look at the optional Arc USB remote. Many people find this a big bonus in terms of workflow when using this audio interface. So there you have it. You've done the basic setup, you've learned how to use the onboard controls, and you've gotten started with Total Mix FX. This is a true studio grade audio interface that bridges the gap between desktop and full rack units. Thank you so much for watching and enjoy creating with your Fireface UCX2.